Adam from IG wants to know, what are your thoughts on augmented eccentrics? He said they're very popular now, and he's curious to know what I think. Thanks. So Adam, I know I say this a lot, but this is a really great question. And these hot button topics come up, right? The industry gets caught up in these certain things and they get really focused on them for months, sometimes years at a time, but generally it's like three to six months. It's like, oh yeah, let's talk about augmented eccentrics. Let's talk about tendons, whatever. They'll talk about it for this short period of time and then they'll forget about it. So I would say the starting point when we're talking about any kind of training foci is this. What does their needs analysis tell you? Have you done something that has said very clearly this person needs to improve their eccentric de training development or their eccentric training adaptations? So I'll give you a very practical example. One of the high school kids I'm working with, uh, I had Daniel Martinez uh, on a call a while back. He's been helping me with some of my force plate stuff along with like Drake and some of the, the Hawking crew. But Daniel and I literally went into like the back end. I said, here's one of my kids. His goal is to improve his vertical jump. What do you see in his profile that you would attack or that you would focus on? And to make this really practical and, and valuable for me, I didn't just give him the numbers and then expect him to give me an answer. I looked at all the data, said, this is what I see. So I'm getting his feedback. Am I correct in what I'm seeing? And then furthermore, what do you see that I miss? That's the value in having a mentor or a trusted expert is what do they see that you don't? That's the value in that. So in this case, with this young man, he said, look, his braking velocity isn't great, right? His eccentric velocity isn't great. So how can we improve that? So in his case, we are doing some of these augmented eccentrics. We're doing, you know, Maybe it's not augmented, but we're doing something in, this, in the form of like a drop squat and catch, right? Where you're really making emphasis on, on dropping quickly and stopping. Then in the augmented eccentric world, we're using like bands, right? Slingshotting bands over him and then working on having him come down as quickly as possible, stop, and then push back up. Now, with that being said, is there value in this stuff? Sure, especially if somebody needs it. But here's what's more important. Can they put the brakes on? And if you follow Bill Hartman's model and you know about the narrow ISAs or your long, tall, skinny type athletes, a lot of times what you see with these athletes is, man, they can squat. Butt to calves are pretty close. But the way I would describe it is they struggle to get out of these positions, right? So if they get too deep into a squat, they don't come out. If they get too deep into a cut, they don't come out. So I would think about it like this, Adam. Yes, maybe those augmented eccentrics are valuable, but do they have the braking power necessary to stop themselves and come back out? And again, that's not something I can answer, but I think it's something that needs to be on your radar because I don't think a lot of athletes have that. So with this gentleman in particular, yes, we're making a targeted focus on his eccentric velocity, but we're also teaching him to stop, overcome quickly, and push himself back up. So like anything else, I think there's merit to it, but you got to make sure you're actually saying you've identified a, a specific weakness that this client or athlete has, and then applying the right strategy to get them to address it, right? Don't just follow the crowd just because, oh yeah, so-and-so really likes this. No, like figure out what this specific athlete needs. And if that is the correct intervention, then by all means use it. So again, great question, Adam. Thanks for chiming in. 